Do we all have a guardian angel? Well in Catholic theology yes we all have a guardian angel. But we must understand their role. They are not created just for that. They are created with this mission, but if they are created, it is for themselves. God created them as persons to unite his angels to him, through the beatific vision so at a given moment, when we are conceived by our parents, they receive the mission to indicate us, to direct us towards paradise, towards eternity. We know that this mission was also the cause of the fall of the demons. Because they understood that they had, in fact, to help despicable little human beings, not very intelligent in relation to them, to become in heaven greater than themselves, since the paradise is given first to those who are the most humble and the man is more inclined to humility than these great intellectual angels of high level. So we all have a guardian angel given to us, I believe from our conception. Saint Thomas said from our birth but actually from the mother's womb, since the Holy Spirit can also come. Angels have a role. They will therefore first know our psychology and guess by what our main weaknesses, our qualities, our defects. It must be understood that the angels, their essential purpose, is a little voluntary chosen goal, it is to lead us to the beatific vision. So it may happen that, if an immediate terrestrial happiness is harmful for this purpose, they themselves provoke certain trials. On the contrary, if a certain time of earthly happiness is useful, they will favor this earthly happiness. What does it mean? That when we pray to the guardian angels, and we can do it, since they are the friends of God, they collaborate with God, they are not God, they are not creators, but they have a role, so when the Bible says do not worship me, I am only a servant, an angel. It means that they should not be regarded as God but as friends of God. Nevertheless, if we ask them, for example, for a well-being, for example money for a better life, well they will think things and see if for us, for our eternal salvation, it must come now or later. And so it may happen that we are not granted because the true wealth that they aim for us is eternal wealth. That it is better that we spend, for a certain time, for example of poverty. The problem of the angels is that, obviously, they have no body, they did not live on earth. So that, as people arrive in paradise, our ancestors, our grandfather, our grandmother, and so on. And seeing how close they are to us, they have lived the same things as we, they lift them above them, they delegate to them the role of decision maker in relation to our destiny. So that little by little our guardian angel, and the angels collaborate with them, become the saints and our ancestors. However, the saints of heaven, our ancestors, do not have the power to move matter. That's why when we pray to someone, like Saint Faustina, for example, who protects us, we say pray for us because she will ask the angels for an action and the angels will apply it. But when a guardian angel is prayed, he is told to watch over us because he, by his natural power over matter, can move matter, make things happen and thus provoke concrete events. So that in heaven it is a true church that collaborates to lead us to salvation.